Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at the installer for OpenSUSE and in particular OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, although the installer is exactly the same were you to choose the non-rolling release OpenSUSE Leap. Now, the reason I'm showing you this today is just to show the versatility of the Yust installer. Um, typically if you're installing a Linux distribution, be that uh, Ubuntu, be it Debian, the number of options you have are fairly limited. So when I say that, what I mean by that is you get to, you obviously choose the desktop of choice in most cases, you then get to input your personal information. You may well get to choose the partitioning uh, format and file system, but over and above that, you usually have to modify the system once it's been installed. With Yast, however, in OpenSUSE, things are slightly different. So we've got running down here in a VM, um, the install USB ISO, which I've uh, fast forwarded through to the step where it's actually asking us to choose our desktop. So I've already already passed through the initial stages here because those aren't important to the content of this video. So we've got to this page where we are going to choose our main desktop. So you get your choices here of Plasma, GNOME, XFCE, <clears throat> and a couple of other choices there for non-traditional desktops. So we'll choose Plasma in this instance, and we'll whisk forward. It will now go away and ask us to confirm the partitioning system to be used and the file system it wishes to use, which is by default ButterFS. It's fine for the purposes of this video. Time zone pre-filled and accurate. User details, we can put any old rubbish in here. Yes, it's extremely simple, but who cares? Right, now this is the important bit. So, installation settings. This is where Yast differs from most other installers. I think pretty much all other installers, apart from some of the kind of bespoke um, uh, systems that might be out there where you can set up according to an install script. But what you've basically got here, you can adjust and you can change any of the parameters that you see on the screen here. So booting, you can change the bootloader. You can go in and you can amend the default software choices that are going to be made for you and you can add and remove from those software choices. Uh, you can come then hit a security, you can turn on or off CPU mitigations. Now we've seen in a previous video how um, I consider that um, the CPU attacks that exist out there are fairly rare and are very unlikely to uh, attack the typical desktop user. So you can go in there and you can change those. Uh, your firewall you can switch on and off SSH services, um, SSH ports, blocking them or not as the case may be. Network configuration, which type of network manager do you wish to use? All of this is available to amend and customize from the start. Now, the most important one for me when doing this is the software. As you can see, and most people will probably just bypass this, but if you click on the software, down the sort of left-hand side here, you've got a whole array of options from different desktop environments. So obviously we had the options of GNOME, KDE and XFCE, but you've also got LXDE, LXQT, Enlightenment, Mate available on there, should you wish to use those. Um, additional fonts, if you wish to include those, you can do. Um, multimedia, now we're on to applications. So some of these are pre-ticked. If you don't want these particular categories, so for example, I don't play games on here particularly, so I could untick that. And that's now going to take out the games installation section and free up some hard, hard disk space for me. I also do not use the KDE personal information information management suite. I prefer to use something else. So again, I can untick it and elect not to have that installed. But let's just pick one of these categories. So let's just go multimedia, for example. And if we come down here and we click on details, we'll go back onto this uh, section again you'll now see that it's telling you what it's going to install by default. And you can untick any of these should you decide you don't want them. So don't use VLC, take it out. 
if you prefer, for example, one of these other players down here, you can do so. So I use Audacity, so I'll tick on Audacity. Um, maybe I use Blender. Tick on Blender. Maybe I prefer Dragon Player to VLC. Very unlikely for playing my music, but there you are, you never know. Um, and as you can see, all of these different uh, options made available to you. And once you've done that, you just accept. It'll tell you what it's going to pull down and install and take you back to the screen here. When you've done that, of course, you can go back in and carry on. So let's come down and have a look at what else we've got here. So as you can see, lots and lots and lots of options here. All different tools, all different options that you can choose to install or to deselect if they've already been selected for you. Uh, graphics, for example, let's tick on graphics and let's see what we're being offered. So again, text by the default graphics applications, but I have GNOME if you prefer that as your image viewer, you can select it. GNOME Photos if you prefer that. Now obviously there's going to be an accent here on KApps, KDE applications, because we chose KDE as our desktop of choice, but um, you don't have to go with their defaults. So GT Thumb, for example, Color Paint, Critter, Critter of course, fantastic uh, painting and image creation software from KDE. We might decide we're going to include that, so we can tick that on in there, uh, and plenty of other, other options down there as well. Now, of course, should you wish to, you can include uh, a secondary desktop. So you may decide that in addition to your KDE desktop, you may also want to include the XFCE desktop. Tick it on, and it will show you everything that it's going to install. As you can see here, all the XFCE panel, goodies, power manager, XFCE screen shooter, etc. So it's going to include all of those XFC packages, you may not want those, in which case you can go in and untick them. But uh, as you as you can see, this is far more extensive and far more uh, comprehensive than pretty much any other Linux installer out there. So you obviously click accept, it's going to include that as well, it's going to add the XFCE desktop to our choice, and then we'd go off and we'd hit install. Asks us to confirm, and it starts the installation, and that will go on for some considerable time. And there we go. Well, I hope you found that useful. As I say, it's it's a very different way of installing Linux than most distributions will will offer. Um, far more customizable, uh, and you'll end up with something that saves you a lot more legwork in the long run because you can make those initial choices up front. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you again in the next one. Bye for now.